Well, the suits want me to explain that I'm a virtual human, which means that I'm based on the real experiences and personalities of actual war fighters and their families. Make sense? Sure. So Bill, I mean, attempts to try to build some rapport. This man is not part of a video game. His name is William Ford, and he is an artificial intelligence created to do something extraordinary. Provide real help to returning warfighters and their families. We have such a, a significant challenge with the issue of stigma in asking for help in military populations. Organizations like the American Psychological Association have all come to the same conclusions. We've got great treatments out there, but the big challenge is getting people to access that treatment. Ranking experts and military leaders recognized this need. NIMH will tell you that from the onset of whatever the element, whatever the incident is that causes post-traumatic stress here in the United States, it's 12 years till someone seeks their first treatment. 12 years. The goal of SimCoach is to create a space online where returning service members, veterans, and their family members can find out about health care resources that are available to them. They can explore their own issues in a very safe and anonymous fashion and they can take the first step towards seeking help with a live provider. SimCoach is essentially a virtual human that's online, not a real person. You can go there and interact with the character and find out things that are relevant for understanding your own issues and for getting help, and nobody knows about it. The key aim of the SimCoach project is to make it so that people that are hesitant to seek care with a live provider can go online and interact with the SimCoach and get healthcare information in an anonymous fashion. And that's a really neat thing because a lot of times we find that people that need help the most are often least likely to seek it. So we want to break down those barriers to care. We want to make it easy for somebody to feel safe talking about the challenges that they're going through emotionally and get information that can help them. At the Institute for Creative Technologies, the effort to create virtual humans capable of performing these tasks is underway. The uh, SimCoach online application has, has a number of components. The natural language understanding, the lifelike behavior of the character, and an intuitive interface so that the user knows how to interact with that character and the site's content. We start by coming up with a number of character archetypes uh, that we feel uh, would be the type of person in real life that you would go to to have that conversation. Uh, then we go into defining each of those character archetypes so that they become a, a real person. Finally, we start getting with our writing team to really fill out the content for each of those characters so that they aren't just an encyclopedia of information, uh, but are actually someone that you can develop rapport with, you can start to trust, and that when they give you the information that they have available, it's something that you believe is, is worth your time following up on. We've currently written more than 5,000 lines of dialogue for a single character. That's just how many lines of dialogue are necessary so that the character can react in a convincing and realistic fashion so that he seems human. You see a lot of chatbots online and these are typically just a, a photograph of a character or a graphic image of a character and you type in text and the, the computer analyzes the question and just matches it to a response. It's just a one-to-one -one matching. What SimCoach does is it creates a model of the user. It collects information about the user and builds an impression just like you do when you meet a new person. The SimCoach isn't a diagnosis tool, so we're not trying to diagnose PTSD or depression. Um, we're really just trying to give individualized information um, to the user. We do ask some, some questions that, that come from clinical questionnaires, and although we're not diagnosing people, we're actually trying to find out what type of information we can give them based on their answers. If you don't mind my asking, how's your sleeping been lately? Here's a link on the do's and don'ts of good sleep hygiene. We take for granted a lot of times how complex real people are. And so when we try to mimic that by creating a virtual human, we start to realize the enormity of the challenge. Building a character that can understand what you're saying, can put it within some kind of a logic model, can express with their face as well as their voice and their gesture. I mean, these are big challenges. Building a virtual human capable of doing all of this requires a significant effort in the field of software engineering and artificial intelligence. Say we're talking about uh, the uh, confidentialities of the site. I might ask, is this private? Is this confidential? 
these all really mean the same thing to the system. So there's a classifier that's in the system that gets trained on all these various instances of text that, that correspond to some concept, some semantic meaning. Once the system has a concept with high confidence, it can reason about what to say next. Conversation networks are built in a lot of small nodes, and every node has a lot of different ways that we think it can go, but they all operate independently. So if you're in the middle of one node and then you bring up something else, the virtual human can understand what happened, that the conversation changed gears and jumps to a different node to sort of talk about that. SimCoach uh, took uh, a lot of people's uh, involvement here at ICT to create this foundation uh, of, of technology that would uh, allow for us to develop authoring tools, develop a, a system architecture that could then be used by uh, expert users in creating a, additional information and really design their own SIM coaches uh, that might be more effective at delivering different information to a whole different user base. Still in its prototype stage, SimCoach has already given its creators a glimpse into its potential and a roadmap for the future. What we are working towards uh, is removing the keyboard from the conversation and just having you speak to the SimCoach and allow for the conversation to be much more natural, uh, as well as using onboard cameras and having the SimCoach detect your movements so that your gestures or your posture or even your facial expressions might add to the responsiveness of the characters. This is only the start of it. While we're developing something to help warfighters, veterans, and their families, everything we build here is going to have relevance to the civilian population. It's going to change how people interact with computers. They're going to be able to interact with a representation of the computer that's more like another human. I think they'll quickly see that the uh, complexity, the humanity of these characters is, is something that uh, is ready for a, a wide variety of uses. We're going to be able to use virtual humans to access information, uh, to get education, even help with our health care. Uh, that's really cool stuff.